Hi there, this is Patricia from patriciafenty.com and today I have a pattern, a really basic crochet stitch pattern on a comfort blanket for pet rescue donation. And so this is for a, a cat rescue center that I have here in the community that I live in. And this is a size that they specifically requested. It is uh, 18 inches wide, 24 inches long. And so it can be used as a blanket to uh, comfort them when they come into the center or after they've had surgery, if they've had to be neutered or spayed. And it can also be doubled up to use as a comfort pad. And I do have a tutorial for a comfort pad. I will link to that below and up here as well. So they do request both the comfort pads and the blankets. So I'll show you how to do this really, really simple pattern. I'm using scrap yarn. Uh, I also did a, a patterned one here where I just was playing with the two different purples. Uh, so of course you can make it using uh, any color combination that you like. So let's get started. So starting with a slip knot, and if you're new to crochet, I do have my beginner crochet series that shows you all the basics that you need to know. And I'm just using a four and a half millimeter crochet hook. That's a nice size for a number four medium weight yarn. You're gonna put the loop on your hook. Now this technique I'm showing you is basically doing your foundation chain and the double crochet all in one stitch. Of course, you can just do a foundation chain and do a row of double crochet if you like. But I like this, this technique. So we'll start by doing a chain four. So yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. Chain four. So now you're going to begin a double crochet. So yarn over and you're going to go into that first chain, that chain one, and gonna go under two loops. I didn't get all the ply there. There we go, under two loops. Then you're going to yarn over, pull the yarn through, but you're not going to complete the double crochet. And you wanna sort of pull this loop up a bit long. You're gonna do a chain one. So yarn over and chain one. You can hold that stitch so you can keep track of it. And now you'll complete your double crochet. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So again, begin your double crochet and then you're going to go into that chain one and you've been holding that with your thumb and it's, it's an obvious V stitch at the bottom of the row going under two loops, yarn over, pull the yarn through, kind of make that a bit of a longer loop and in, instead of completing the double crochet, you'll do a chain one. Hold that chain and yarn over pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, completing your double crochet. Now you can hold it like that, or I'll show you how this stitch is really, becomes quite visible. Yarn over and go under the two loops of the chain one, yarn over, pull through, make that a, a bit of a longer loop, yarn over, chain one. You can hold the stitch if you like, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So when you turn your work over, you can actually see your foundation chain. There's your chain one, your chain two, chain three. So if you're, if you're not pinching and holding it, or if you are and you lose your space, you'll see that it's the obvious V stitch at the bottom of your work. So I'll show you again, yarn over, you're going into that obvious V stitch at the bottom of your work yarn over, pull through, make that a little bit longer of a loop, yarn over, chain one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So you're doing your chain one <coughs> and your double crochet all in one stitch. So yarn over, going back into that chain one, yarn over, pull through, make it kind of a longer loop, yarn over, chain one, yarn over, finish your double crochet. So carry on and do that all the way along until you have your foundation row to the width that you want. I am going for 16 inches. Okay, coming to uh, the end of the row, I've done my last stitch. And for me, uh, I, 
I want this to be 18 inches, not 16. I don't know where my brain's at these days. But what I do for the foundation row is I actually measure it relaxed to like an inch shorter than where I want to be. So for me, that was 17. And when it, you work it, it sort of stretches out a bit and it'll end up really close to the 18 inches. So for me, this was 58 stitches. You can count your stitches if you like. Um, because you do want to keep your stitch count on track as you go. Um, so if you're new to crochet, you may want to count your stitches and count them every few rows to make sure you're on track. So once you have your foundation row to the length that you like, and whether you've done this technique or you're just doing a foundation chain and coming back with double crochets, this will work the same way. So you're at the end of your row, you're going to chain one and turn your work. Now, a lot of patterns chain three to turn the work, two or three, and count that as the first stitch. This is not the first stitch. It's a turning chain. And then you're going to begin your first stitch, not in the turning chain, but in the double crochet from the previous row. So yarn over and do a double crochet going under both loops of that first stitch from the previous row and do your double crochet. And then yarn over and do a double crochet into the next stitch. And again, you're going under both loops of the V stitch from the previous row. And you're simply gonna work your double crochet all the way back, working into the top two loops of the double crochet from the previous row. And it's as simple as that. And I will show you at the end of this row how to turn and begin the next row and that's the stitch pattern it's just a simple double crochet and i do uh, begin my rows in a slightly different way i will show you how you can change yarn color in the middle of the row and unless you want to use a magic knot you can use a magic knot and just tie all your scrap pieces together and i do have a link for that video in the description box below click on dot 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 more to open up the description box um, but here I'll show you how you can change yarns mid row. Okay, so what you want to do is you're going to begin your double crochet. So yarn over, go under the, the loops, pull through. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Don't finish the double crochet. Here you're going to cut off your tail end and then bring in your new color. And then you'll just take that new color put it onto the loop, keeping your tails over to the side there, and you're going to finish the double crochet with the new color, just like that. Now you can tuck these tails down in behind or you can crochet them in, it's up to you. You will have to darn them in later. But what we'll do now is just yarn over, go into the next stitch, going under both loops, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And there you go, and you've added your new color. Now, you could just, if you want to tie just a little, um, do that just to sort of snug it up while you're crocheting, and then you just carry on with your new color. And so this way you can just add on your scrap yarns uh, wherever you like, and you don't have to sort of plan it out. It just, once you run out of a, piece of scrap yarn, just add on a new one. So carry on and I will see you at the end of the row where I'll show you how you can add on a color at the end of the or the beginning of the next row. So we'll see you there. All right, so as you come to the end of your first row, you wanna do your very last stitch in the third chain of that or in the fourth chain of that beginning chain four. So that's one, two, three, four. It's kind of obvious, you can see it there. So yarn over and picking up both loops of that fourth chain. That'll be the last stitch of this row. We're gonna also change color here. So yarn over and you'll complete the last, you'll begin to complete the last double crochet, yarn over, pull through two, but here's where you're going to change your color if you want to do color changes at the beginning of the new row. So you just cut off your tail end, bring in your new color, and you'll pull that through. 
And then I always like to just do a little crossover knot here just to hold the yarn in place just for now. And, and then I also just keep that in when I darn in the tail end. And so then here you would do your chain one, just like before, turn your work. So the chain one is the turning chain. It's not uh, the first stitch. And so you have your chain one, and this is where it's a bit tricky because your it's not the chain stitch. It's that one there that you're gonna do your double crochet in. So yarn over, going in under both loops of that, that first stitch. It's a bit hard to see because I've got a lot of yarn going on here with the tails, but just pull that through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then go on to the next stitch, going under both loops of the next stitch and working your double crochet. And the stitch pattern is as easy as that. You're simply just going to double crochet for the whole blanket pattern and beginning your rows with a chain one as a turning chain and then a double crochet into the very first stitch. As I say, a lot of patterns, they do a chain two or chain three, and that first turning chain is also the first stitch, but we're not doing that here. And what that does is it keeps um, the ends of the blanket, the rows, uh, nice and um, snug. You don't have sort of that gap that the chain stitches can do. You can see here where it would do that. It keeps it nice and snug along the edges. So that's the blanket pattern. It's as easy as that and you can do it all in one color. You can mix up your colors. You can do uh, you know rows of sequential colors or you can change it up as you go. Use up all your, your scraps, whatever you like. So I'm going to carry on and I'm going to make this 24 inches in length and I'll come back when I'm done. Welcome back. So I Took me a while to realize I didn't actually show you how to finish the end of the row when you don't have the chain stitch at the end. So as you come to the end of the row you have these obvious V stitches at the top and that's what you're crocheting into. Those are the tops of your double crochets from the previous row and you'll see here that that V stitch ends and then there's a loop that goes that way and that's your part of your chain one, your turning chain. So you can see there's three obvious stitches to the end of the row. So you just carry on doing your double crochets into the top of each of those stitches. And then going into that last stitch, going under both loops. And you can see, you can see that that's the end of the row because that stitch is now going in the other direction and finish off your, your double crochet. If you're gonna add on a new color, you would add it there. Otherwise, you can just finish that double crochet, chain one, turn your work and carry on. And so again, not in the turning chain, but in the next stitch, you do your double crochet. And that's how you end and begin every row. So yes, yeah, so now just carry on crocheting until you get this to the length that you like and I'll just zoom out here so you can see how my piece is working out working up there we go so you can see I'm just sort of mixing up the colors adding and changing sort of very randomly there is a bit of a, th a thought here like I wouldn't really do two dark colors together I'm always kind of alternating darker and lighter colors but other than that I'm just sort of doing a random pattern and then of course we'll have all the tail ends to darn in at the end um, but carry on and we'll see you at the end welcome back so here I am at the last row I did 41 rows all together and that gave me my 24 inches in height and so I've already cut my tail end here um, so just to show you, you finish your last double crochet in the last stitch and then just yarn over and do uh, a loop like that, chain one to fasten off and snug that up. And then you can just go ahead and darn in your tail ends. Now, if you've done like what I've done and you've been doing your uh, 
changing colors all along. There's a couple of ways that I like to sort of darn in the tail ends. So if, the, if you join at the end, I do like to do this one knot over like that, snug that up. And what I do is do another knot. So it's like a box or square knot and like that. And then I just darn the pink in this way and back and then this color up into its color and back. And that works really nice along the edges. But when you're working into the knots that are in the middle of the fabric, I don't like to actually tie a knot for that because it does, uh, you can see the knot. So I actually then undo that. I've, I've tied it to sort of keep it while I was crocheting to keep it in place. But I do undo this and then what I do is I just kind of snug that up and I bring this yarn this way and back with the darning needle, cut the end. And this one I go this way and back and cut the tail end. So you don't even see that there's been a join there. So I'm going to darn in all my tail ends and I'll be back for the final reveal. All right, here we go. Have the blanket all done. So again, it's 18 inches by 24 inches, and then you can fold it in half so it can be a comfort pad or a comfort blanket. And then here is uh, the other pattern that I did. And so you can use, of course, any yarn, any color combination you like. I don't think the cats will be too discriminating or dogs. And again, just contact your local pet rescue center or veterinarian or pet store and see what they want. Ask them, what can you use? What sizes do you need? And also, I always recommend that you wash the material before you donate it because there is sizing and chemicals in yarn from the manufacturer. So wash it, uh, block it if you like, and then bring it to your donation center. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And we'll see you next time.